All right. <clears throat> hey, everybody. So you picked Brink. Um, I'm going to turn this down a little bit. At least I'm here. Uh, let me know if the audio levels are okay. I left them standard from last time. Didn't, uh, didn't uh, change anything because I haven't streamed anything. All right, so first up, um, for graduating seniors, congrats. Uh, you're all done. <laughs> um, I just want to say, uh, you know, uh, a couple things. W one is keep your passion. Uh, it's going to be, it's going to be difficult. You know, this is a, this is a tough industry to break into. Um, and so maintaining that passion is going to be critical. Keep working, keep working on your stuff, your portfolios, um, your reels, whatever it is. Um, you're going to hear a lot of no's and it's only going to take the one yes. So just keep at it until you get there. Okay. You can get there. We have, uh, you know, graduates in industry. It's, it's, it is something that definitely happens. It just might take you a little while. Um, and you know, you need to understand that. Hopefully I made that clear, uh, in your time, um, with me, uh, that this is not, not going to be a cakewalk. Uh, but you have the skill set. We, we've equipped you with the skill set you need. Um, it's just going to take a little time and a little extra work on your part. Okay? Cool. No questions or anything in chat. I wonder if there's even anybody here. <laughs> or if I'm just talking into the void. <laughs> hey. Hey, Sky. So at least well, Sky's here. <laughs> so even if it's just me and Sky. Uh, I guess we're going to play Brink. All right. Um, yeah, I preloaded this to make sure everything was going to run okay, and it's... Frame rate is not great for something that's um, older. How old is this game? I mean, you guys... A lot of you were talking about it in Discord, like uh, you knew this game. And the graphics and things that I've seen looked like it was... It's not new. It's definitely frame it's sucking up my, my bandwidth, I'll tell you that. At least this little screen here. Like like this <laughs> you know, I got a ten sixty three gigabyte and a, a i five with uh six cores, so it's not like I have a wimpy machine. Um, I definitely need an upgrade, but it's not it's not that old. Ah. Uh, okay, so anyway, I had to, when I started the game, they, they had a uh, cutscene, and they made me choose, without really kind of giving me any context, right, they made me choose uh, to save the arc or to uh, flee the arc. Uh, and so I randomly, because I didn't know uh, anything about those two factions, I chose to flee the arc. So I guess I'm on the Rebels. I have no idea what how that's going to affect gameplay um, it shouldn't right uh, and there was a little uh, demo thing I didn't want to make everybody watch the demo right it's like a or not a demo it's like a tutorial like a video tutorial um, that was kind of explaining to new new players what this is I'm assuming again this again goes to why I think it's an older game because <clears throat> they had to explain the concept of a hero shooter uh, right which does not groundbreaking anymore so everybody should be kind of familiar with that that each character has different roles on a team and the roles are you know <laughs> useful for different situations and scenarios all right so this was my guy uh i don't know they didn't explain what any of this stuff was all right oh here i can custom go back to customizing oh what's that Exclamation point. So, okay, there was two things as they initially did this that kind of stood out to me. The first was that when I went to do this, they, they do this, right? And those, <laughs> the highlight, the things are friggin' moving, right? Like, as a, as a player, that is frustrating as hell. Like, why would you make this thing move around? <laughs> it's... That's a weird choice. Oh, I forgot to update the... Hang on. I forgot to update the damn st stream information. Let me update the stream information real quick. What are we playing? Brink, right? 
and break and break. <laughs> kind of silly that they make you do this like three different places here in, in, in Twitch or OBS. All right, there we go. Okay, so <laughs> does Rainbow... Uh, the Red Scott asks, does Rainbow Six Siege count as a hero shooter? <clears throat> Good question. That's kind of a, a hybrid. I haven't played it. What the what I've seen of it, it kind of looks like it is, but it kind of isn't. Uh, definitely not in the uh, Overwatch mold of, you know, really important he uh, role type, type situations. Uh, but these, you know, here, the concept of a hero shooter is not new. All right, let's get back to the annoying thing. So it's moving around, right? Like, what? Why? Why, game designer? Why did you have these things move around? <laughs> right? I, and I get that, right? And this is nice, and it's responsive and all this stuff. Like, I get that. Especially back, I think, for the time. I, like, I, I, what I remember uh, is that this is, um, you know, an older game. <laughs> Does anybody know how old this is? Yeah. Yes, it's also exaggerated. I agree, Sky. So Sky says, I agree. The movement thing is dumb, and his head in general moves a lot. I don't think anyone's idle animation should be that active. I agree. <laughs> it's a very active idle animation, especially when you're trying to, like, look at something. And then, like, my frame rate is struggling, which is odd to me for an older game with, uh, you know, a decent rig. Right, uh, but the textures are nice, right? That's a really nice model. Um, they did a good job, especially for the time frame. If it is older, all right. So let's, can I go back? I'm assuming that's back. What? What the hell? Oh, switching sides. Oh, they said that was super important. 2011. This game is from 2011, and it's chugging my machine. What the hell? <laughs> And I'd love to know what engine it's on. Like, is this CryEngine? That would be that time frame, I think. Maybe that's why it's chugging it. Anyway, the models and stuff for 2011 are phenomenal. Like, that's really, that's really nice. Uh, okay. Uh, I wanted to go back. How do I go back? There was a... Oh, oh done. Done for face, not done completely. Tech 4, huh? Makes sense. Uh, there were other things, right? So... <laughs> oh, right. Right, that was... There were problems with that engine, I remember. Um, the, id, the id engine. Um, uh, if I remember right, they did early, early ray tracing early version of ray tracing, which is why it was performance, there were problems with performance, and that it really stressed your graphics card. Um, but again, that was a long time ago. I didn't have to remember that. I think that's that engine, <laughs> if I'm remembering right. Alright, so I want to know what these exclamation points are for. Uh, you know, as a designer, right, that's a really good indicator. Hey, you have something you need to choose here. And, oh, I left the tires. That's <laughs> very Mad Max. Uh, I didn't... Why did it stay on that? I, like, moused over it and then left it. And it like, that's annoying. So I think it's telling me that I have a choice there. But, like, again, here, as a designer, you, like, you told me I, I there was something important here and then, like, left me to it. Like, what was it that was important here? Is it that I have a choice between these two things? If that's the case, you needed to put that little exclamation point somewhere here and tell me, hey, it was these. Right? I think that's what it's trying to tell me. Right? So I've in, I've now looked at that thing. Right? And so here's another example of that. Right? I look at a thing. It's like, oh. Okay. What did that mean? It means that I haven't looked at my pant choices. I think that it's... I have a choice, right, to unlock these things. Right, let's just pick something here. 
<laughs> cleats. I wonder if I could spike a guy with my cleats. <laughs> That'd be fun. This guy's fine. <laughs> Again, um, I know I said it in Discord, but my I don't play first-person shooters very much, so don't expect a lot here from me, guys. Like, <laughs> it's probably going to be pretty bad, especially if it's multiplayer. People are going to be mad at me. <laughs> uh, I think I've told you guys this before. I'm more of a strategy gamer, so you guys making me play all these games is going to be... Interesting. <laughs> Alright, let's just jump in. Uh, let's select this guy. Yeah, select him. Oh, that's right. We have a choice. I thought this was online, right? Online multiplayer, right? Wasn't that the point of this game? Chat, help me out. Yes, no. You guys picked it. I know it looks like there's a storyline. I don't think you guys want to watch me play through the storyline. Waiting for chat to fill me in here. Like, all the people that voted for it aren't here? Like, what, what the heck, guys? <laughs> How can you vote for it? Just single player stuff? Oh, that's what you like. I get it, Sky. Sky says, I don't like FPS games either. Just single-player stuff like Doom. Yeah. My son plays a ton of first-person shooter stuff. He's actually pretty good. <laughs> so I watch him play. Uh, so I know what you guys are talking about when you start talking about first-person shooters. Because I can't. I'm no good. Which one are we doing here, guys? Make me make a choice. No choice from chat yet. I don't know. I guess I'll just pick something. I don't think you guys want to watch me play the campaign. Are there even other players? I think that's what the chat... No, I think that's what... Uh... There's supposed to be an online thing. I mean, it says online stats right there. Are they all online? I don't understand this. <laughs> Somebody go into Discord and tell people, <laughs> like, if you pick something, you have to show up for the stream. That's the point of us doing this. Not to just make me play games I don't like. <laughs> if that's the case, I'm just going to switch back over to Stellaris. <laughs> that's something I play anyway. I, I guess we're just going to pick something. We'll pick something, we'll play this for a while, and then I'll go play Stellaris if nobody else is like, watching or caring. Uh, challenges. Free play, campaign. Compete in the leaderboard, so that tells you that there might be an online component, but no, not if, not multiplayer. Like, oh, you can't even click that. Well, that's kind of weird. This menu's odd. That's odd behavior. Odd menu behavior. All right, I mouse over it. It stays until I hit another button, but you can't click it. Like, interesting. Notifications. Nothing. Right, dossiers where you there's like a bunch of uh, tutorials and stuff. I don't know. Let's play some campaign for a little bit and then just see, I guess. Oh, look, you have to play both sides. All right. Day one, getting answers. What happens when your inside man is out? Primary objective is defend. Excuse me. Defend the door. Stop the agent. Secondary objectives. Defend the lift generator. What? 
Oh, you guys can play with... We can play together? Is that what's happening here? Yeah, I'm not doing that. Only because I don't want to expose it onto Twitch, right? Okay, well, let's just play. Brother. Servers? It said joining server. Now we've had an agent what and the a hell? I am confused. The time has come to <laughs> Brink can be complex. That's a bad My sign. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, if you make a game and it says the very first thing you say to the player is, hey, this game can be complex, think hard about what you just made. <laughs> Move more than you shoot. Yeah, I get that. That's a first-person shooter. And hopefully what they mean is that it's complex for the time. Right, because 2011, they weren't asking a lot from first-person shooters. Hey, yeah, I don't want your... Oh, look, cutscenes. At least I can skip it. An hour ago, I was making my kids breakfast. Then I get the call and get given this gun. Oh. And now... Was the movement just about spray painting slogans for you? No, it's just kind of sudden. <laughs> Do you think this day hasn't been coming for years? Chance tried everything to avoid this. With no options left. Look, any Is that moment Irish? Now, so just... pour in here. They won't be asking questions. Are you ready to use these, brothers? I am ready. Then let's do this. Oh, okay. I'm assuming Wazda. They didn't tell me that. It's interesting, like, as designers, what we choose. Are these real players? Are we... Oh, Jesus, I'm assuming it's a sprint, yeah. Oh, this is going to be bad. And nobody's telling me... I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just following this guy. Oh, shit. He got shot. Oh, it's like lagging out hard. What the hell? I don't think these are real players. Yeah, these are not real players. I'd be dead. I'd be way dead. Yeah, this is bad frame rates. Uh, what? Let's see if we can bump. No, no. Okay. That helps. Is he dead or not? Jeez. I have no idea what's going on right now. This frame rate's bad. This frame rate's super bad. And I don't I don't understand. It seems like I'm playing with other people. We fill my ammo with X. No, are these other players or not? Dude, nobody's... They didn't tell me what squad is. Nothing. Yeah, I think.
Where are these guys going? That was fun. Auto, auto cover seek, which at the time would be like groundbreaking. Doesn't make any sense. We're not advancing. Where the hell are these guys? Okay, let's follow that guy. Surprise! <laughs> Higher frame rates in paintings, yeah. Brothers, disarm that charge. I am pressing it. Oh, you have to hold it? No. They didn't tell me how to throw a grenade or nothing. These have to be bots, right? There's no friggin' way. Yeah, look at that. This is weird. This is weird. They didn't tell me anything. Did refill. So I'm out of ammo. Oh, that's great. <laughs> That's such bad AI right there. I should have been so dead. These have to be bots, right, guys? I'm I feel like I should make a rule. You can't vote for a game if you aren't gonna Oh <laughs> like twelve guys down there. Can't vote for a game if you're not gonna show up. What what is this? Failure, I'm assuming. What? They've destroyed the storage room door. Can't let them take our agents or Gwenna will torture him. Put him down now, and you'll be doing him a favor. How do I throw the damn grenade? Like, this is ridiculous. These are terrible bots. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I agree. Thanks, game. 
They're not, I mean, it's it's complex, and then they're not even telling me. I did refill. You have limited ammo, apparently. Like, look at how bad this AI is. <laughs> I have no ammo. I got nothing. I got nothing. Give me some ammo. Give me some ammo. I can give him ammo. Oh, that makes sense. I don't have any ammo, but I can give him ammo. What are they talking about? Jesus. Are we supposed to shoot him or not shoot him? I could really use a grenade right there, right? <laughs> like he just ran past me like <laughs> I'm assuming this game is much better with actual players oh. Shit a turret that's no good Let's get out of here agent is so their way of enforcing teamwork is that you can only get more ammo from other teammates it seems that way but what's odd though is that like um, like why would I have ammo <laughs> or what not have ammo but be able to give it to others it's really weird I don't know what I'm supposed to do with this guy. Oh, it says defending. Okay. Hey, help each other, guys. <laughs> Alright, that was a classic. I let these... I let the agent escape? What? It said defending. Like I was defending the damn objective, right? I don't know. This game is weird. Hmm. Hmm. Come on, bots. Pick me up. says neutralize it keeps saying neutralize the agent which like is, I think that guy like but he keeps getting up and stuff like I don't know this is confusing and then it says defending right when I go over him and it says objective and it says like stop the agent like doesn't make any sense Your 
What's supposed to be happening here, guys? I don't know, this is... I don't know, guys. I don't know how much longer I'm going to be playing this. because this doesn't make sense. This is defending, right? I shoot him, I get defending points? Like, look at that. And where's my grenades? I don't know, I push a lot of buttons here. Look how bad this AI is. <laughs> oh, that's funny. And it almost feels like I can't, I can't really lose. Yeah, this, I can see why this game didn't do very well. I don't know, thoughts you guys? switch over to Stellaris. I mean, if nobody's here, right, and they wanted me to play Brink, but I'm no good at it. <laughs> it also has weirdly bad frame rates for a 2011 game on a 1060. That doesn't make sense. Nobody else is saying anything, so we're out. This is this game's weird. Oh no, I'm gonna lose the XP. <laughs> All right, let's update this. It's so dumb that you have to change change it like this in Twitch. I mean, I get why they do it, but it's annoying. There should be a better way to do that. All right, so I'm always a fan of strategy games. <laughs> oh, man. See, I and I had started to update Stellaris because I thought you guys were going to vote for that because it was in the lead. Um, and then uh, <laughs> I stopped because you guys voted for, for Brink. Uh, so we got to wait a little bit. Um, yes, Paradox games are very, very interesting. Uh, I'm, I'm a Paradox fan, for the most part. Um, I really like their idea of grand strategy. Um, I, I, mostly because I'm not a huge micromanager. Um, right, so like in, in the Total War series, I don't do a lot of the, the battles, um, on the map, right? Mostly what I, I focus on um, when I play something like Total War is um, the overarching strategy rather than the um, micromanaging the, the little nitty-gritty details. Um, and Stellaris doesn't have a lot of... It does, but it doesn't have a lot of that. Uh, the micromanaging things that it has are not sort of time-consuming, right? And you can option on it. Now, again, I haven't I haven't played it actually for... A couple years, um, 
Uh, mostly because when I start playing games, uh, I tend to waste a lot of time on them, and I don't have a lot of time right now to, to waste on games. Um, so that's kind of one of the reasons I like that we decided to do this this game club. Um, so I would get to play some things that I normally wouldn't play, uh, and also not sit down and like get sucked into, you know, <laughs> a Civ session. Right? I can, I can play Civ for a long time. I don't know about you guys. That's one of my favorites. Uh, and still ours, you know, scratches that itch of, of what's what Civ does really well too, right? Is the just one more turn. Um Stellaris, you know, all strategy games are really good at that, right? Is is giving you um giving you an objective and then you complete that objective. Next here's your next objective, right? So you constantly are working towards something. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Update one. Okay, good. <laughs> Oh no. What? What is going on here? As we wait. So this is this is an exciting gripping gripping Twitch stream, right? <laughs> Go spinning wheel. Go spinning wheel. <laughs> Maybe we could count the spinning wheels, would that be exciting? <laughs> I mean, we could gamify pretty much anything, right? <laughs> oh, darn it. I wish I had uh, thought of, thought about that ahead of time. So I guess uh, next time I'll have alternates preloaded, ready to go, instead of sitting here waiting. All right. Did you see the Discord chat? No one tell Jeff... <laughs> we are only voting to see him struggle at games. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, guys. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> but that's boring. That's super boring. And you guys aren't interacting with me, right? So that's lame. I need you guys to come interact with me on the chat so we can talk about designer things. Okay. So the Red Scott says, the only downside to Paradox game, at least City Skyline, Stellaris, HOI 4, CK2, not so much, is the long initial loading screen. Yeah. <laughs> Which is funny, right? Because their engine can't be, um, yeah, thousands of dollars for DLC. <laughs> Well, that's part of the, that's part of the, that's a win for that company, right? Um, in fact, I, I've always been surprised that there's not more pushback. There's, there's started to be pushback. Um, but I'm going to be honest with you, you know, I mean, for the amount of time that you spend on, on a Paradox game, like, okay, you know, um, like, what are they charging? Like, is it still 60 for a base? I don't think it's 60 uh, for, for a base uh, Paradox game, right? I haven't bought one in so long. <laughs> yes, we do complain, but we buy, right? So people still buy uh, because you need those DLCs uh, if you actually want to play the game. And, and that's one of the interesting things about the Stellaris design, or not Stellaris, the Paradox design, especially for like um, CK2, right? Is that the game evolves with those updates. Um, so you want to buy them, you want to keep. Uh, playing the game, so it, it like reinforces itself, right? Uh, because um, I don't know if you guys know this, but from a <clears throat> from a, a, a publishing standpoint, it's really really important. Um, so games that spend a lot of time, like players spend a lot of time in, are really uh, good for attracting other players because Steam automatically reinforces that with the little your friends are playing pop up. So the more that you see that as a player or a consumer, the more you see that pop up, the more willing you are to say, like, you're not going to go just do it right then. But what it's doing is setting that threshold um, of uh, there's a marketing, marketing, I forget the term for it, but there's a there's definitely a known case that you need to see something at least seven times. For your brain to start to pick up on it and then realize that you're seeing it oftentimes in those type of situations um, so 
a game like Stellaris that keeps players in it naturally feeds other players into it because Steam is, is in of itself a network, right? So when I see that and then I say, oh, that triggers in my mind, oh, I haven't played Stellaris in a while. I'll load that up, right? Because I saw that, that Dan is playing Stellaris. So then I'll load up Stellaris, which then sends out a, a notification into my node network of friends to reinforce that, um, hey, uh, play that game, play that game, play that game. Um, so it's kind of a the winners of... of Winners are rewarded. Let's put it that way. I don't remember why I got on that top, that uh, that tangent. Let's just start a new game. I haven't played this in so long. Should we just rando out? Just straight rando? Or should you guys want to help me pick? I'm waiting for chat. Waiting for chat. Representative democracy. This should be the Starship Enterprise. Why did I go Sean Connery? <laughs> I don't know why I did Sean Connery right there. <laughs> uh, you guys are not going to help me pick. I'm just going to have to pick. <laughs> I love that. Sentient Mushrooms. <laughs> With the name of Ashley Easterbrook. <laughs> That's why I love Paradox Games, is like these stupid, weird, little funny things, right? Like, <laughs> the Blorg uh, commonality is a military junta. They're, they're fungoid people. And this, this leader's name is Ashley Easterbrook. <laughs> it's funny, right? Right, whereas, <laughs> you know, like these are more alien type names, <laughs> except for old Ashley Easterbrook. <laughs> oh, that stuff is ridiculous. I don't know, you guys aren't saying anything in chat, so I'm just going to pick something. Should we play Standard Federation, Starship Enterprise? I could customize it, but oh, let's just random it. Let's just random it. So who knows what we just got. This is where you got all the sliders, right? Sliders, UIs for days. That's that's what Paradox games are, basically. Your giant spreadsheets just hidden, hidden with good UI. <laughs> it's probably why I like them so much. I don't know. This is all fine. Who cares? Ensign difficulty? I think it's the lowest difficulty setting. I didn't even look at that. <laughs> Just because I wanted to get started. All right. So if you're new, if you're a new player, this might be a little overwhelming, right? Like if you haven't played Paradox uh, games, or um, in this case, Stellaris, right? You just got confronted with holy crap, <laughs> UIs for days. Uh, so new players, that's that's something that um, Paradox struggles with, right, is um, how to get new players into these games, right? So it takes dedication to want to play these games. Like, I've recommended this game to some of my friends, um, and they don't have the patience to get through the exhaustive, steep learning curve uh, that this presents you with. Um, so you kind of have to be really dedicated to want to learn how to play the game. Um, which is bad, right? That, that's bad for a, for a company. Um, but again, you know, I mean, like when you have all the options and all the things that are in this game, there's, there's really no way around it. Like, I don't know. I don't know what you would do uh, if, you, if you're making a game like this. Um, and you present a player with you know, all these options. Like, look at that. Like, how, how intimidating is that? As a brand new player, you're like, what just that? What is going on? Oh my gosh. At least they're labeled. I think when I first started playing, they weren't even labeled. They were just like uh, icons. They were just those icons and you had to know what they did. Right? So this requires patience, right? Because you need to learn everything. And I, like I said, I haven't played this in a long time. So don't remember all this stuff. 
which is good because it's like I'm playing it for the first time. All right, so the first thing here we're presented with, besides an overwhelming uh, map, right, is they're telling us, okay, this is our ruler, the Harmonious Rax Thrak, <laughs> Rax Thalak Nation, their Irenic dictatorship. So this government is a pacifist, path, pacifist form of autocracy, uh, where the state is charged with protecting the citizenry from their own violent tendencies as well as any external threats. Uh, yeah, I have, have been saving the stream, so I will... They take a long time to upload and stuff, but yes, I will save it and uh, upload it. You guys can watch it later. All right, so the first thing here that you're confronted with <laughs> is a bunch of things that you don't know what they do, right? Unless you sat down and you did the... Um, the create sort of an empire, then you have to kind of know and understand these things. But basically your civilization, the overarching strategy or not strategy, the overarching theme here is um, uh, sort of space conquest um, for these games, right? So you start out in a little solar system here um, and you're, you are, you're fledgling a little empire or whatever you want to call it. Um, basically, you're trying to spread your your culture. It's, it's very similar to, to Civ, right? Where you're, it's a four X uh, strategy game where you're. Ex, ex, what is it? What are the X's? It's explore. I never remember them. <laughs> but basically, Civ. Uh, anyway, we're we're confronted with some things here. So each civilization has some things that they have to pick out, right? And so these guys have some pluses and minuses or modifiers to their base states, right? So we have ethics here. Um, so they are fanatic author authoritarian, um, allows stratified economy, living standards, kin and slave aliens, must have autocratic government form. And your em empire modifier means, there these are the empire modifiers tied with it. You get a monthly influence of plus one, you get a worker pop population. That's what pop means. They shorten, they abbreviate that and never tell you that. Uh, resource output of plus 10%. They also are pacifists, so they cannot use unrestricted wars policy. Ooh, that's bad. <laughs> uh, they cannot engage in indiscriminate orbital bombardment. Okay, so the empire modifier then is uh, empire sprawl from their population is 15% and their stability is plus 5. Civics, they have two modifiers. Uh, cutthroat politics, the political system in society is renowned for its intrigue, power struggle, shady backroom deals, and cloak and dagger scheming are par for the course. Those who survive long enough to learn the game, however, tend to learn it well. So they get a minus 20% edict cost. So you have to, in order to pass, have your government run in a certain way, you have to pass edicts and stuff like that. Um, so that reduces the cost of that type of stuff. They're also environmentalists. So the society seeks to coexist in harmony with nature. Great care is taken to preserve the environment and limit consumerism when possible. So the effects are uh, population consumer goods upkeep is minus 10%. All right, so origin, prosperous unification. In the eons since the first primitive Rax Thalrak communities took shape in the rugged mountain valleys of Rax Thalakai, <laughs> our civilization has spread and prospered. Unfortunately, our undisciplined minds were still prone to emotional outbursts that could sometimes lead to violence as weapons became more deadly with each passing technological age a complex system of government was devised to protect our citizens from harmful elements including themselves now after the discovery of the hyperlane network the finest minds of the harmonious rax thalrak hey, boy that's tough to pronounce i wish i had chosen better <laughs> have finished development of the first hyperdrives the stars themselves are finally within our grasp begin peace be with you serene protector all right there a prototype synthetic intelligence. My task will be to assist and advise you as we venture beyond the safety of our homeworld for the first time in history. So this is this is their attempt to deal with uh, this overwhelming thing that you're looking at this as a first time player. You're going, what is going on right now? <laughs> right. And so they they have advisors, just like uh, Civ has advisors. Um, so we can go tutorial. We can go tips only. We can go no tutorial. I don't remember enough to definitely go no tutorial. Uh, but I don't want to bore you guys with full-on tutorial stuff. Um, so I guess we'll just muddle through. And I'll probably make a lot of mistakes, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> a game of Stellaris would take 
many, many, many hours, much more than one one little stream here. Um, and anyway, I just want to talk about design anyway, so let's just do Very well. tips. I will provide tips explaining only basic functions and tools as you explore them. Well, that's good to know, dude. Thanks. All right, so if I remember right, yeah. So this is our home solar system. These are our planets. Um, so let's see, where's our home planet? We gotta find our home planet. I guess it's this one. Uh, no. Where's our this is our science ship. This is our construction ship, yeah, yeah, which is used to construct space station. Are we this on is our homeworld and the capital of our empire. Are we the planet moon? summary screen, oh, which we are currently looking at, provides an overview of the planet's important statistics and allows us to set a designation if desired, as well as the option to automate the planet. Right, so your planets um, are where you... Um, start to build things and, and stuff like that. Uh, make choices on like what goes in. Uh, so they've changed this. Yeah. So it used to be a little like much larger spreadsheet or not spreadsheet, but like a little. Yeah, they definitely changed this. They take Here we see a breakdown of this planet's population, divided into layers or strata. Yeah, it's weird. So the buildings used to be a different sort of layout. It was similar to this, but it was much larger, um, uh, graphics-wise. And there were certain things that you could and couldn't do, and like different areas on your your home planet. Like it was supposed to be re representative of like the layout of an area. In the Megacorp update, they changed it last year. In the Megacorp update, yeah. Um, so this is interesting. <laughs> it's, mu it's much more streamlined, uh, definitely, right? Because it was a lot of decisions. There are still tile blockers, yeah. Um, there were interesting decisions that you had to make, but it probably I, I could see why they would do that because it would definitely slow things down, right? And you'd get bogged down in trying to min max. Um, your home planet and really you know that's not the focus of this game the focus of this game is is more on exploration and uh, like you know spreading your your galaxy or your population sorry wow this is i don't remember all this stuff this is where we manage all ground forces on this planet this screen also tracks how much devastation or damage the planet itself has suffered yeah, so Sky says, usually if I want to get into a complex game like this, I go watch a how-to-play YouTube video or anything on, otherwise you just get frustrated trying to learn. Yes, uh, is very important uh, in these games. Especially these Paradox games, because they are the UIs are crazy. Yeah, I remember all this that stuff. All right, let's get out of here. Let's just... We haven't even done anything. Like, no time has passed. We've done nothing. <laughs> like, <laughs> Alright, where's my, my science vessel? Here we go. So this is our science ship. Uh, and you use your science ships, right? So it's like the Enterprise. You send it out. You can manually move your ship around. Um, not just your solar system here, right? Um, which you, you know, there's no aliens or anything. Nobody else here in our solar, home solar system. Uh, but we will run into other civilizations. Uh, where's the... I remember, I think it's at this. Yeah. All right, so here is the galaxy, uh, the universe, or galaxy, galaxy. Uh, all right. Uh, and yeah. So we want to send our science ship out to start of a planetary body exploring its physics, science. engineering, and society so research data. Is. Military fleets are used to protect no. our emerging empire from... There it is. Science ship. Um, so we could manually walk that guy around um, and have him go, like, explore stuff. Or you can automate it. You can also build ships and then customize exactly how they are. Uh, I gotta remember this. Don't remember it. Yeah. 
So let's send him to go, I don't know. Send him out into the unknown. Actually, let's, let's go here. Just have him say, go, let's see. So if I remember right, these are the hyper lanes. Um, so these are the, sort of the, sort of like the node network that you need to go down, right? So you, in order to get, like I can't just go from here to here. I have to go here, here, here um, in order to explore that thing. All right, so it's, I think what we'll do is we'll send him here. Why is it not, was he not selected? Yeah, there we go. I'm gonna send him to go explore that system. All right, so there's our first order. There's also resources out here we need to start exploiting. Um, so what you do is you send your construction ships to go do stuff. So you could build a mining station for a hundred of these red things. Looks like I have a hundred of the red things. Um, so I think it, it'll give you three per turn. This one though is five. Oh, he's already Mining stations are used to extract the minerals okay. and strategic resources of the object they orbit. Right, so we already have a mining station here, so the green uh, is telling you we, we are getting that already. So every year turn or whatever it is. All right, so there's a couple different ones here. There's energy, minerals, food, Consumer goods. What's this one? Oh, trade value. I don't remember that. That must be in a, an update <laughs> from the base game that I played it at launch. It's a little different. So I don't know. How would you guys explain all this stuff to a new player? Like, how, how do you think you could try and explain all I mean just there's so much stuff in here throw it into chat if you have an idea what you would do all right so let's let's take uh let's take that construction ship where's he at mining station research station construction ship all right you go over there and you build a mining station. Oh, look, there it went. But we're getting plus, plus 28 per turn, so we can afford that. And it'll give us three more per turn. Um, what we don't have, I think, right now going... Why don't we have... Oh, right, we don't have a research station. So I think we have a... Yeah, we have a... So we are orbiting... Here, get this out of here. So here's our home world. We're, we're a moon... Um, we have a a uh, mining station here, I believe. Yep, so there's our mining station on this one, but we don't have anything on this, which would give us the... Well, why is it green there? It's not green there. It's supposed to... I thought that the green meant we were getting it. Right. So anyway, in our home system here, we only have we have this one where we can go get some more minerals, and this one where we can get some of the energy credits. And I think that's tech, right? Yeah, engineering research. So as you, there's a progression tree of you know spending engineering research points and upgrading your tech, like you would expect. All right. So we don't we haven't run into anybody else yet. Um, we can all leave all this stuff for now. Let's just start the game rolling a little bit. So here it's in normal speed. Well, they kind of did, right? There's that little that little AI guy who popped up where I didn't take the full tutorial. I think the full tutorial is is actually it's better than a YouTube series in that it's it's te it teaches you step by step. Do this. Do this. Do this. Do this. Um, you know, from a designer perspective, it's always better to, to, um, you know, show or play rather than tell. At least, 
that's my opinion. All right, there's our there's our science ship he's about to take off. Did we appoint a captain? Oh, it has a captain. Okay, there he went. So off he goes. Uh, he warped over there, and we can watch him come in. Looks like there's nobody, no aliens here. Um, so that's good. He's got some things that he's going to do, right? So he gets into orbit here. And then we can tell him to go explore things, right? So we can say, hey, um, survey the whole system, which means he'll go to explore each one of the planets um, or survey individually. I'm just going to have him do the whole thing. Construction complete. Nope. Oh, we got our construction complete. So let's go home. That was pretty fast. So now you'll see that it's green and we're getting the resources there. So where's our construction ship? Uh, you need to go. It seems to me that we don't have anything here. We can. Yeah. Let's build. A research station gets start getting some engineering points because I don't think we're getting too much yet. Where is the engineering points on here? It's interesting that they don't have it on here. Why? Right. Oh, there's different because there's three different ones of research, right? Um, physics, society, and engineering. And this one's going to be engineering. Oh, hey. Hey, we just found something. The RNN. <laughs> oh, man. Pob Therat has made a startling find on Dolphin 1. The planet is teeming with alien life. For the first time in history, we have encountered life forms that did not originate on Rax Thalaki. This amazing discovery has silenced those who believe we are alone in the universe, although none of the alien creatures found on Dathlon are sapient. It is likely only a matter of time before we we encounter beings that are we may not be alone and we just got a boost to our um, I think it was society research should be in science right Ooh, oh oh that's good that's a good indicator that's potentially ha inhabitable so he found a planet one of our science ships has just surveyed a world that would make an excellent candidate for our first colony so it is of the same colony. planet class as our home world so our colonists should be quite comfortable there Yeah, green is green means it's a good match. Uh, yellow means you can kind of make it work, and then I think there are ways to terraform it and make it better. And then red was like really bad. I don't know if I don't even remember if you could even colonize those or not. I think you could, but it would be not not great. Yeah, the red Scott says green is a good habitat habitability. Red's uh, yellow is meh. All right, yeah, this is way different. I don't know if I like it yet or not. Um, so this is an alpine world. So we come from an alpine. No, we don't come from an alpine world. Because uh, it's only 80% hab uh, habitable. Uh, terraforming. I can't even check that out yet. Yeah, this is way different. So these are, here's the blockers that we were talking about. Where there's, there's stuff. Um, parts of the planet. That some is usable and some is not, right? And so these are telling you, hey, there's some impossible mountains here. There's dangerous wildlife here, and so there's ways that you can start to clear them, right? So here's some stuff that is accessible. And I think this is what you would, yeah, have to do to un to clear the block, and then after that, you, um, I don't remember. There's usually stuff underneath it, like it turns into something else like one of these type of things all right so we can't in order to colonize we have to build a colony ship which i haven't even got into the ship building yet and we've been streaming for probably like a half hour already <laughs> so uh let's get to this uh contact report so planetary animalia the harmonious rax thrax nation is a buzz i'm going to change that i'm just going to start calling it rax thrax uh, the Thrax Thrax Nation is abuzz with news of the alien life that was found. 
while hardly intelligent by Rax Thrax standards, the fascinating beings defy easy classification and hint at the immense complexities and possibilities of the universe. Interesting. <laughs> I wish it was kind of like Crusader Kings where you had like different silly, funny little things that you could click on there. Uh, maybe there is. Maybe they added that uh, since I played. Found. All right, so this is because my ship is still going and we're still playing. Right, things are still happening. This is all real time. It's not a it's not a turn based system. Uh, so he found an unidentified object, and we have a choice, right? Um, so a small rectangular object on the surface of the planet is deflecting all scanning beams like a mirror. Our sensors are unable to determine its material composite or composition. Right, so we could leave it, change the scientist, or research it. Um, you would do this if you wanted Construction complete. Um, somebody else to, like if you had two ships with different sort of science officers, you could say, oh no, I want to give it to the, the other guy. Um, and <laughs> the Red Scott says, I was playing the other day and got an anomaly that turned out to be a fart joke. <laughs> There's, <laughs> that's, that's what's fun about these uh, paradox games are the funny, surprising little things. I mean, that's why I think um, CK... You know, Crusader Kings 2 still does as well as it does because it has all that kind of stuff in it. Those funny little things that make you pay attention. All right, so we're going to automatically research this thing. Um, although, current scientist finds this really routine. So he has, th these guys have levels, right? So he's at a, he's at a one out of five. Um, uh, so we're going to try, oh, jeez. Okay. Network error, is that on my end? Sky? Are you guys not getting anything, or is it on your end? Hopefully it's on your end. <laughs> Just reloaded the page. Okay, cool. Um, oh, gosh. So I pause it because I'm getting all these pop-ups. I need to deal with these things uh, rather than talk about them. All right, so I'm just going to have this guy research. Um, before we do that, though, I want to talk about their choice here, right? They made this very uh, determined choice here that it is real time versus turn based, right? So normally uh, a strategy game would be turn based because why? Why do you guys think that that would be the case? I'll wait. <laughs> this is the one disadvantage to kind of teaching through Twitch, right? So I have to wait for you guys' answers. Unless, of course, nobody wants to talk. So normal strategy games are, at least they used to be, all turn-based. Nobody's answering. Not to overwhelm. Um, in some ways, I, I think it's more because the reason that you play a strategy game, right, is that um, <laughs> strategy games appeal to kind of min-maxers, right, is that I want to make the best decision possible. And if I put a clock on that, automatically that changes the nature of my decision making. Um, so I can't sit there and optimize and figure out the absolute best um, strategy at all times. So it's kind of like, you know, chess versus speed chess, right? Is that they're, they're kind of different beasts because you play them differently. You have to, um, like, so playing speed chess, right? It's about not just the best decisions, but the person that can make the best decisions in the least amount of time. Um, and so uh, a, a real-time game puts pressure on you. Um, so it sends a kind of a different message here. However, the way that they've dealt with that is pretty smart, right? In that they let you pause it whenever you want, right? So this is kind of a best of both worlds versus a turn-based versus real-time. If I have a real-time game that I can pause, now I can... Um, speed through things, especially in a game like this where there's long periods of wait in between, uh, to get to the action or the thing that I want to make a decision about, right? I don't have to sit there and wait, right? So remember um, last week we played Death Coming, and there were spots, right, because it was kind of had a... They put those those angels that would go around, and like if you clicked on something while an angel was there, it was a, it was a negative, right? It killed, took one of your lives. Well, 
that's not fun, right? For, for a lot of players, waiting isn't fun. That's one of the problems of, of, that um, stealth games have. Um, it's like, how do you make waiting fun? Um, and so here, what they've done is they've, they've bypassed all that by saying, well, it's real time, but you can speed it up. You can go as fast as you want. All right, I didn't show you guys that yet, but you can. Um, <laughs> I don't want to do it because I'll, I'll get a bunch of decisions and stuff that pop up. Uh, but basically, I can, I can choose how fast... I want this thing to go. There's like a, a speed counter that I think it's the plus. Yeah, it's the plus and minus. Uh, and then I can just pause it when I want, right? So that's a that's a way to negate those disadvantages of long periods of, of having to wait. All right, so let's make some decisions. Yay, there was our game, game design uh, talk. At least we got something out of it rather than just watching me struggle to relearn this game. All right, so I'm going to let that guy research that thing. All right, and then we have to deal with this habitable world survey. We now know without a doubt that a thriving biosphere is not something unique to Rax Thrax. Uh, both the scientific community and the public at large are eager to learn about more about the various forms of alien life found throughout the galaxy. Efforts to catalog the life forms we encounter are already underway. But xenobiologists have urged us to focus our planetary survey efforts on habitable, life-bearing worlds. And we get a decision time, a commendable initiative, right? That means uh, begins the habitable worlds event survey event chain, where it's it's going to be like a, a, if I remember right, it's a it's kind of like a mission based thing, like hey, you got to find like five of these or something like that, uh, or you could say no, I don't want to worry about that right now. And if you do that, you get a plus twenty to your influence, right? I don't know why that would be, but I think it's good to kind of tempt you uh, to to make a. a a dilemma, right? Like they want there to be a dilemma. So the way that they, they do that is to give you a, um, sort of an incentive to choose the other one. Situation log updated. Oh, it automatically. That was weird. I made a choice and it unpaused. All right. I know all about that. Uh, yeah, we talked about this planet. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, did he finish all his surveying? So, oh, by the way, these are sort of what the ships are doing. All right, so this guy, the construction ship is idle. Um, so, so, I thought we used to be able to jump to him. I'm sure that you can, I just didn't do it right. All right, so let's take our construction ship. Where's he at? I think if I already got him selected, I have. Let me go do that. Let's exploit all the resources. All right, so there's that. And our science ship is still sciencing. Science ship is sciencing. Now, where's he going, though? Like, these are. Did he, did he not do this one? What's he doing? What are you doing? What? Why would you do that? Okay. <laughs> oh, because he went while he was while I was still making a decision. Okay, so now I think he's gonna. What's he doing? What are you doing? He's investigating the planet, which I thought he already did. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Plenty of resources here, and we, we need to start building a colony ship, right? So, let's go home. And go on, Rax Thrax. Rax Thraxy. Raxy Thraxy. Uh, where do you build ships? Where's my ship building? Oh, gosh, did they move it? This is our system yeah, star base. These upgradable stations mark star system ownership and are most often tasked with producing all types of ships. <sighs> okay. Um, so, let's pause while we look at this. So there are ways you can upgrade how many ships you can build at one time. Um, that's interesting. I don't remember there being a downgrade. Uh, these are modules, so things you can add onto the ship, or the, the station, um, to, like, speed things up. And 
stuff like that. So it already has a shipyard. Yeah. It already has, uh, what is this? A trade hub. So yeah. we have a shipyard, a trade hub, yeah. and a crew quarters. And then you can upgrade those things as you go, or I think it's a switch them out, maybe. Yeah. And you can't click on those things. So this is, I think, what the station has on it, um, and then we want to build a we want to build a ship. So, that's what? Where's my what? Do I not? I need the shipyard. Build a ship. Oh, shipyard. <laughs> that's dumb. <laughs> right? There's shipyard here. This is upgrading the module. And there's to build ships. I forgot about. All right, so in order to build a colony ship, right, to go uh, spread our influence, which is our main goal, uh, this would cost us 200 uh, to our food, 200 to our, what is that, alloys, and 200 to our consumer goods. And it's going to take 360 build time, right? Uh, they didn't really explain what that is, but I think it's pretty much days uh yeah okay so i think we have we have like one military ship um, so i'm gonna try and do what i normally do in any of these type of games which is spread you want to spread early uh, because spreading late it gets really hard uh, so we're gonna focus on the ship uh for this the colony ship we're gonna make a colony ship select colonists yeah so i think if you have other populations you can have multiple sort of races inside of your your sort of empire so if i were to like take over somebody else's um civilization or sometimes you can like kind of grow your own um you'd have the opportunity to send certain types of uh races around uh all right so build it right yeah what oh should have i got my resources back <laughs> See if that's building. Yes, it is. Okay. Construction complete. All right. So let's send this guy. There's nothing for him to do here. Let's send him over to our. Where's the ship thing? What? What? What are you complaining about? speed things up a bit. Right, so he's going to warp over here. Science ship is still doing its science thing. And you... Oh, an alien mural. So while conducting surface scans of Dolphon 3, science officer... Oh, man. <laughs> Hask, I'm just going to call him Hask, and the crew of the RNN POB uh, discovered what appears to be an artificially carved slab of rock covered in alien writing. They have not detected any other signs of alien activity on the planet. And exactly how this mural came to be here is a mystery. We have prepared a special project to translate the text. Ooh, we're going to get a chain. chain Situation things. log updated. All right. So, we're getting plus 38. Oh. The Harmonious Rax Thrax Nation is abuzz with the news that alien remnants that were recently studied. These remnants are considered definitive proof of intelligent, purposeful alien activity at some point in the past. We may still be alone now, but at least not the first to be so remarkable. All right. You should build a mining station. I cannot. Why can I not? Oh, right. Borders. Didn't explain that. So this is my sphere of influence. So in order to build anything over here, uh, I have to have um, 
Expanded by influence, which means sending a colony or building an outpost. Uh, the Red Scott says, The thing about Stellaris I like more than System other Paradox games complete. is the amount of freedom they give the player. You're able to design your own race and empire and design your own ships, giving a lot of replayability. Right. Uh, you know, because the other ones are historically based. Um, so there's only so much you can do. I mean, the the core of those games... Oops. The core of those games... Uh, or Paradox at its core has always been about sort of historically accurate games. Now that obviously flew off the rails the further they got with, uh, you know, like Crusader Kings and stuff, but that was their original intention. Um, so th I, th I think they try and still kind of maintain that sometimes. Um, so that's why, you know, uh, in a lot of things you can't, like, you, you can't just create all kinds of crazy stuff in, um, you know, Hearts of Iron because it's a, it's, it's a historical, it's supposed to be a historical strategy game, right? And there's only so much you can do versus uh, this game, right, is whatever the heck you want to do. Um, so it wouldn't surprise me if they're already working on a fantasy version of something like Stellaris. Um, kind of a, a... Except it would be on one planet. That's just a guess, but I, I would not be surprised if they, you know, learned the lesson of the freedom uh, that this does for you, you know, they got a whole new, brand new, um, exploitable IP out of it. Um, a very valuable IP. You know, Stellaris is a, is a valuable property for them, and I'm sure that they're uh, thinking about the other things like that. Uh, Sky says, this game reminds me a lot of Space Age on, of the original Spore. Just way more flushed out. Yeah, <laughs> I think this was probably what they intended uh, Spore to eventually be. <clears throat> You know, something like this, although, I mean, this is pretty, probably even deeper than, than that, like, you know, what Will what, what Wright would want to eventually have. Uh, yeah, it's complex, but it's interesting, uh, and it's fun. All right, let's get back to it. Uh, okay, so our science ship finished here. Um, so I don't think I really care where he goes next, so let's set him on auto. Oh, no, I do care. Let's go do this. Go do that research project. Why you left in the first place, I don't know. Okay, so if I wanted to, I could just start exploiting this and, you know, I, by making a outpost, which is probably a good idea uh, because it'll be a while before we get our colony going. Um, you know, we got a, basically a year to wait and this guy could be harvesting resources for us. So we're going to build a little outpost and then we're going to, um, it probably was a waste, honestly, because nobody's probably going to show up, you know, from a game designer perspective, right? It would be a bad idea <laughs> to have a civilization start, like, here, so it would be, like, <laughs> you know, competing for resources right away. Um, so I'm sure that in their start game algorithms, there's something that says, <laughs> no, they, they have to be... Uh, far away. In fact, you can see... I don't know, those are the nebulas. Yeah. I, I almost guarantee you that there's uh, things in that in the start algorithm that would say no. Like, you, they, the rules for startup uh, civilization placement are like it has to be, um, you know, more than three star systems away or something like that. Right? Because it would be uh, dumb, right? It, well, not dumb, but it would be it would feel not fair to bump into an AI right away um, and have to go to war over resources um, when you you don't have any resources to go to war with, right? Like, I have, like, one ship. Like, that's not the point of this game, right? The point of this game is to grow things, right? Like, that's to grow and... and Construction and complete. Try and take over. Um, so you'll see what happened there is my borders just expanded, right? Because I finished the, the thing. But the point of the game is to... Um, expand. That's one of the that's one of the X's in the four X. <laughs> Explore, expand. I don't know. Get, somebody go look it up. <laughs> what the four X's of of the of what the X's are in a four X game. Uh, anyway, it would be dumb, right? If because the the point of the game is um, not to is to encourage those things. Like, I don't play this game to immediately be forced into a, a battle and then, like, lose that battle and then, oh, well, now I'm done. I have to start a whole new um, 
game. Like that, that's kind of silly, right? So I guarantee you that there's there's rules about that inside of their startup algorithms. All right, let's get in here. Okay, so now our construction ship can start doing things, useful things. There we go. Uh, the four X's are explore, expand, exploit, and exterminate. Uh, okay, so where's our ship? Is this our ship? Yeah. Uh, so what do we need most? What are we not gaining the most of? Consumer goods, but you can't get that right away. That's not a, a thing that you get. I think you got to trade for that or something. Uh, so there's only two things really to do. These are totally useless. Yeah. Uh, so there was a science one up there. Science one, that'd be good. That would be real good. All right, let's just do that. Hey, no. Right. I want you to go here, go here. No, no, what? Really? Okay, never mind. Oh, the science thing is the thing he's exploring right now. That's what it was. Got it. Special project complete. Science officer Hrask, no, Hask, Hask has managed to partially translate the alien mural discovered on Dolphin 3. It's a memorial for an extinct alien race that once maintained a small interstellar empire in this region of the galaxy. They were apparently exterminated by the creators of the mural, a fact that they seem to regret. Given that the mural has been dated to be in excess of 300 million years old, it is likely that the its creators are also extinct by now. Perhaps most interesting of all is the material that the mural was made of. Despite its age, it's from remarkably good condition. Hmm. Amazing. Oh, he leveled up. So our science officer there, uh, Hask, has leveled up. He's now level two. Da -da -da -da. And he gained the meticulous uh, trait. Good job, Hask. All right, science ship. Can't be wasting time. Uh, science ship, which way should we go here? Um, this one is within range of both of our home. I like to personally uh, scout out my own sort of neighborhood before I start sending guys out to do more just auto stuff. So we're going to have him go Let's do a system survey. How many of you guys complete. even are there in chat right now? <laughs> I feel like probably most of you are not uh, even watching. Construction complete. Okay. So there's that one. Let's go get this right here. So how was everybody's finals? I hope they went good. <laughs> it says there's two viewers right now. Wow, you guys. That's frustrating. <laughs> Why? I, like, wanted you guys to vote and stuff. Oh, my gosh. Like, I, I'm just going to pick what I want then in the future if you guys aren't going to show up. And I'll tell you that in Discord. I think that's... That's BS! <laughs> Construction complete. All right, I don't think there's anything left for him to do. Nope. Uh, so he can sit around and wait. I guess I could just send him over there because I know that we're going to try and... Uh, did he get there? Did he get there? Yes. Okay, so there's already stuff. Oh, our governor. Oh. Okay, so Hask is like a part of their standard name. Uh, so this guy is zoom on then. So our governor just leveled up. So do so you know what a governor is? Well, there's only two of you guys, and you already play this game. So uh, oh, homeworld, not that. Gotta go to homeworld. Go to our thing here. So there he is, right here. 
The leader's tab lets us hire, dismiss, and assign idle governors, scientists, admirals, and generals. Oh, wow, our governor's really young. He's only 37. Um, and they generally will uh, govern until they die <laughs> of old age. Um, so this guy will be around for a while. So that's good. Uh, he has a righteousness thing, so he is minus 25% crime. And he has architectural interests, so it's, you know, better for building and district costs and planetary build speed. So, yeah, he's pretty good. And he leveled up. He got to level two. All right, so let's send the construction ship over here because there is stuff for us to do over there. Did our ship get built? I don't did our ship get built? Do we have our colony ship ready? Oh, it is. It's ready. Okay. So let's get our colony ship. Let's go. Oh, did I? I have stuff to unlock in there and I didn't? Where are you seeing that? Is at the top of my screen? Oh, is that these? Do I have the things I didn't even do? Oh my gosh, I forgot about that. <laughs> Technologies are categorized into three different fields, with each field typically having three available research options. Right, so for physics, these are our options here. Oh, hey, what? Hello. Why did it do that? I thought I had... A way to switch between them. All right, well, you just got to pick one. <clears throat> um, so we could research this one, which will speed up our research. That's a good one to do early. It's also probably the cheapest. Um, yeah, so let's pick this one so that we can start getting better stuff, right? So, like, improve deflectors for your ship. So then you start building your, your ship uh, going from there. I don't know why I explained this to the two people that are watching. I already played this game. <laughs> So I'm going to stop explaining the game, since you guys already know it. And nobody else is watching. Oh, Sky, you haven't played this game? Okay. So I will keep explaining it then. Uh, right, so this is the cost uh, for things. Um, right, and then just, you know, like, you just got to pick things that you want to focus on um, in each of these categories. Yeah, it is having a free weekend. You could, you could download it uh, and play it uh, this weekend for free. I think they're doing a free weekend because they're trying to get uh, wish lists for um, CK3, which just announced, um, which I am interested in, but should definitely not buy because I would spend a lot of time in CK. <laughs> oh, and the DLC is on sale? Nice. And it probably has some good uh, fun Yes, you still have to buy it. Yeah, so it's like a try it, try it out thing. So you you get it for free this weekend, and then they take it. Steam will remove it from your library after this weekend. All right, so we need to think about what we're going to do. Why does this one gold? Oh, because it's a, a thing that I need to. It, will, it has to be there, right? So this is uh, getting everybody together. So making the the federation. You're going to pass, Sky? What other game are you trying to get through? Mm. Oh, I love research. I love speeding up my research. Final Fantasy? Yeah, a lot of people. And Doom? The tradition screen displays oh, the tradition trees available to our empire. A tradition tree must first be adopted before any traditions within it can be unlocked. Stellaris is good. You can waste a lot. If you like 4X games, this is a great one, especially because it's themed really well. Like, uh, you know, if you're a, if you're a sci-fi fan at all, it's fantastic for that. This is different. <laughs> this has changed. Uh, 
Oh, so they stole this from they stole this from Civ, right? Absolutely, they stole this from Civ. Cause I don't remember this at all, unless it they changed the look of it. All right, so we have to pick a sort of a thing that we want to pursue or what we like our how we're going to expand our empire. If we're going to do it through expansion, domination, prosperity, harmony, discovery, diplomacy, supremacy. Um, I don't remember. Usually you want to tie these to um, your civil, like your civilization. So what do, we, what do we like? We are, I don't remember how to find this. My peeps. What are my peeps The government like? screen presents us with information yeah. regarding our empire and its government. Here we can see our ruler and any related effects. A ruler, okay. A ruler is warlike, but our government is pacifist. <laughs> and his agenda is to secure the border. So, def uh, defense platform build cost is less, damage is increased, defense platform holds increased. We are currently pursuing prosperous reunification. Okay. So let's go back. Um, so I wonder if we get to change this later or not. I don't know. Let's just let's just pick this one. We're gonna pick expansion. And then do you pick these things later or what? How does this work? Interesting. Very different. No, right. oh, come on, I should Where is it? Okay, it's still going. Let's get that construction ship to work. Be sitting around wasting time. Give me resources. More resources. Always more resources. All right. Yeah, yeah, we can. What? This again. Okay. How are we doing on this stuff? Oh, we're still gaining. Okay, we're good. What? Influence. Where's the influence? Oh, it has to be fully surveyed first? Oh, okay. That's new. Or, or at least I don't remember it. Ooh. We've recovered artifacts from an ancient alien civilization on Tion 2. They must have been active in this region of space. Approximately 12 million years ago, judging by the age of the artifacts, from what they've been able to piece together, our scientists theorize that these aliens, who call themselves the Voltum Star Assembly, worm-like annelids, roughly 3 to 4 meters in length, that communicated with each other primarily through vibrations carried along their segmented bodies. Uh, Red Scott says, I love the CK3 announced because it's stated with every CK2 player's favorite pastime, assassinating children, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, CK2, never change. <laughs> Situation log updated. Colony, hey, you no, know, you need to go there. What are you doing? This is always fun. Founding your first colony, I love this. Hey, we're going to colonize. And this is what you could do dumb stuff, but I'm not going to do dumb stuff right now. Ooh. System survey. Shisuma. <laughs> Yay. Come on, colonize. Congratulations on having colonized the new world. Our colonists are now in the process of building their first settlement, but it will take time for them to become self sufficient. 
it's a great day for the harmonious Rax Thrax Nation. Right, and so then you have to sit here while it colonizes. All right, so let's get back over here. Oh, Science ship. What? Did you not survey this system? Is there stuff for you to do here? No, you surveyed everything. All right. No, 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 no. All right. Probably been build, building uh, some military. All right, so there we go. Increase a little bit. Found. The RNN Pob Tharat has discovered a previously unknown strategic resources on AR-288, dubbed volatile moats. These preternatural, preternatural particles contain a tremendous amount of energy, which could be exploited in energy production as fuel or even explosives. Fun. If we do not yet possess the means to extract this resource, we should seriously consider establishing control of the system for future exploration and exploitation. Yeah. Yeah, we should. Okay. Where was that? That must have been here. Yeah. Uh, as our science ship scans the surface of Yin and One, it becomes quite clear that we have found something out of the ordinary. Gee, you think? <laughs> Considering where this is like your third system you've scanned. Uh, its composition history provides with extra materials that we should take the opportunity to gather. We will surely come across even more irregularities like this as we survey new planets, and we should not interrupt their impact on exploration. Intriguing. Oh my. So, Sky, you said you like the art here. I do too, but um, it's interesting to me that they left it really static. It's like the planets are nice, right? And that there's... I haven't even got into, like, ship battles, which are really fun. Um, yeah, no, there's there's really nice stuff. Um, what's kind of funny to me, though, is that they did... they The background is totally static. I would expect it to um, have a little more to it, uh, but yeah, the, some of these these planet graphics and stuff are really nice. You know, <laughs> in some ways, I wish I could like spin the planets. <laughs> Or at least click on them and do something, right? So, well, besides that, after they're explored. Spin, right? That would be fun. He's still not able to do anything. Anomaly found. Can't do that because it's not here, but I could build an outpost. Probably a good idea. Alright, cool. More anomalies. Man, he's finding a lot of anomalies in this system. So that's a level three. This is a level four. I don't know, I haven't had scientists, level 2 scientists take on a level 3 anomaly. Uh, so what I didn't talk about was that when, when your scientists attempt to do those anomaly things, um, if they're kind of outclassed, like it, <laughs> bad things can happen. What's that? 
Oh, we leveled up. Awesome. Construction complete. Uh, I have more decisions to make? Oh, cool. All right. Let's analyze this for a second. So we probably have a choice here. Zero to five, of which we do first. But we only have one colony. So I don't think we're ready for that yet. Star-based influence costs reduced by 10. Now that might be good, considering what we're doing right now. Yeah, let's choose that one. Costing me 352 of this swirly <laughs> cost. <laughs> unity, my unity cost. All right, there we go. Time is this one? Oh, because I'm paused. <laughs> Dummy. Right, I think I'm going to give it like uh, 10 more minutes. I think you guys get the gist of Stellaris, right? And all the little micro decisions that you have to make. to look at this small courier vessels reliable alternative transporting vapors empire sprawl from system enclosures reduced by 25 percent that's not a problem for us right now galactic ambition starbase upkeep reduced by 20 percent oh that's good it's expensive so i think we'll save it for now come back to that later system survey complete Alright, so he's a level 3 now, so he can definitely go research that. Our construction ship needs to get to work here. Uh, I thought it did. Oh, it didn't. It built a... Yeah. Our colony doing over here. Still working. <laughs> so these are the points where you start to <laughs> speed things up, right? So you don't have to wait as long. Construction complete. Oh, junkyard. Astros are going to use a truck for some So I think that's by the science ship. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to get some mining, more mining capabilities over there. All right, let's have the science ship go look at the other thing over here and then decide if we want him to do it or not. Research complete. Yay, we did our research. Uh, so engineering, oops. Could look at... It's a new weapon. A better armor. Planetary build speed. Let's focus on some ships, I think. We, we need Situation to log updated. Updating uh, our military a little bit because I'm sure we're going to run into somebody at some point here. Wait, did they, did they tell him to? There we go. Oh, yeah, we can afford it now. Colony right. 
established. Ooh, nice. Let's go look at it. So there's our colony. Right, so they've got their reassembled ship shelter. Um, we eventually need to upgrade, start upgrading it, and start claiming, putting in buildings and terraforming. Well, not terraforming, but uh, looking at the stuff. Uh, yeah. And eventually, what you want to do is like put people in charge of these things. Looks like he's already in charge of it. That's different. See, I think what I remember when it first came out, you wanted each colony to have its own governor. But maybe that's not. Maybe I'm misremembering. Hmm. The planets and sector screen provides oh, yeah, an overview. Yeah, 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 we're way not, not ready for that. <laughs> That's way down the line. All right, well, there's our colony. Uh, I thought it needs to be doing something, but I guess not yet. Like we can't, we can't upgrade it. Oh, I think it's because maybe they don't have enough people. Is that what it is? It's possible. Right, you have to have people and then put them on jobs and stuff and put them, assign them to different areas of your, your world and put buildings in the world. <laughs> yeah, anyway, it's probably a good spot to, to wrap up anyway. Um, yeah, so, I mean, from a game design decision standpoint here like you know this this is <laughs> very interesting take on a 4x and i love i love their their approach of um speed all right so their their hybrid um, turn base versus um uh rts right where you get to to pause and pick and decide um when you want to, to stop and think about a decision. Um, it's, it's a really, really good hybrid. In fact, um, I think that's why you see a lot of games move that way now and not um, get hyper-focused onto just one or the other unless there's a really good reason for it uh, because this is such a good hybrid. Uh, anyway, I think I'm going to wrap it up here. And um, I'll let you guys... I'll set up a vote again for next week. Although, I'm going to say um, that voting for a game and then not showing up for the stream is kind of bs and <laughs> like if that's the way it's going to be i'm just going to start just picking what i want to do <laughs> and going from there um rather than let you guys pick right because it doesn't make any sense to make me play something and then not show up for the stream uh, you know I, the reason that i want you guys to to pick things is that so we all play it together and then talk about it um so definitely i will set up the um now that i'm out of kind of out of crunch mode a little bit um, I will set up the vote, um, probably today, uh, definitely by tomorrow, and then, um, or I'll, I'll collect, we'll take a couple days to collect suggestions, uh, and then we'll vote, um, probably by, like, Wednesday or Thursday, um, I'll set up the vote by Wednesday, we'll take a couple days to vote, and then we'll lock it in so we can have some time to play, right, so you guys can play it, and you should take notes as you play, kind of thinking about it as a designer, Kind of asking yourself questions about like, oh, why? I wonder why, um, like this UI, like why is it in the upper left, um, or why is this button bigger, or you know, like there's a reason for all of this stuff. And so I want you guys to kind of think about these things, um, and so we can talk about it when we stream, when I stream, um, rather than it just be, you know, ha ha, watch Jeff struggle with the game. <laughs> okay, all right, so yeah, um, you have sort of homework that I'm going to assign, but it's luckily it's fun homework, right? Where we get to we get to play some games together. 
All right. So I think that's it. I think we're gonna we're gonna call it here. Unless anybody has anything else they want to add in chat, it doesn't look like it because there's only like two of you guys. So yeah, cool. Uh, thanks for dropping in, guys. And uh, yeah, I'll try and stick to that schedule where we get something regular going. Um, I don't know. It seems like once a week works for me, but I don't know if maybe it's a little overwhelming for you guys to uh, play everything. You know, once a week. But we can talk about that in Discord. So uh, go drop in the Discord and um, if you want to talk about like scheduling and how much or how often we do it, um, we can talk about it there. All right. So cool, guys. I hope you have a great weekend. Again, congrats on a great semester. Um, and I will see you guys next week or hopefully sooner on Discord. All right. Later.